Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, and I just want to welcome you to today's episode. Today's episode is, I think, going back and talking about a few things that I haven't really discussed in a while. You know, this uh, show has been dedicated to expanding your world of thought, and I like exploring the world of positive thinking. I like talking about consciousness and living your life consciously, but I also like talking about health and being healthy and doing the things that keep you healthy. And that is my job on this show, is to share with you information that will enlighten and empower you in your life. I want to work to encourage you to think positively. And I know that is doesn't happen all the time. Negative stuff just pops up into our lives. But I want you to look at the possibilities in your life when you are thinking in a positive way. And when you start doing that, you kind of notice that miracles can happen. And I really believe that. I believe in the power of thought because it can either make you or it can break you. What you think will make a difference in your life. So what am I going to talk about today? I'm going to go back and go into my book, Christianity, the Law of Attraction, and the One Command. And I'm going to go into chapter one, like in the beginning, right? And chapter one is called, What is the Law of Attraction? And I quote from Benjamin Disraeli in the very beginning. And he said, Nurture great thoughts, for you will never go higher than your thoughts. And you won't. If you continue to believe that, let's say you believe you're not worthy, not worthy of a promotion, not worthy of a good life, not worthy of a decent running car, not worthy. Or you have thoughts that say, I can't, that'll never happen. Why would I, you know, and you may not voice these things out loud, but you may voice them inside. You may have trained your subconscious mind that certain things are true. And those things that are true are the negative things you think about yourself or your, your station in life. And you are struggling to make a change. But inside, you have to make that change first. You've got to change the way you think. I go on, I talk about the fact that the law of attraction is one of the oldest concepts in the world. And it is. It's been around forever and ever. Long before modern civilization as we know it. There were civilizations before us, ones that have disappeared. But many things have been passed down to us. But this latest look at the Law of Attraction became really popular in 2006 because a woman by the name of Rhonda Byrne and a whole group of people that you now know if you follow the Law of Attraction and so on as Bob Proctor and Wayne Dyer and there's a whole number of them that were in this movie called The Secret and this movie helped to launch their careers in teaching you 
and others about this concept of the law of attraction. Ms. Byrne said she read books and and she said she researched back 3,000 years, all right, and realized that this was so. Buddha, he was one of the first men to introduce this concept as of the law of attraction. And he said, what you have become is what you have thought. See, there's that thing again about the power of thought. Right? They, the people of the East have had this knowledge for quite some time. And then it started to sweep into the Western Hemisphere. And we see it in many writings, ancient writings. But there were many theories about the universe that governed us. And depending who you're talking to and depending on um, what book you're reading, there are certain universal laws. And a universal law basically says that this is so, it, 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 you can't change it. This is the way it works. And the law of attraction is considered to be one of those universal laws. But as I wrote about these laws and there's seven of them including the law of attraction my analytical side came into being my hmm, scientific side came into being and you'll see in a moment as I talk about these the six other ones other than the law of attraction so let's go with the first one I talk about. The law of relativity states that nothing is what it is until you relate it to something else. Right? And I go, okay. So if you think about there can be no evil if there's good, they're opposites of one another. Is that what I'm, we're looking at? Or the phrase, it could be worse, right? It could be better, it could be worse. So by relating it to something good or bad, you have given something its place within the universe, the law of relativity. And there's another phrase that just came to mind, you know, you know, and it, it, you know it's rel- relevant. Is that relevant to the discussion that we're having today? Yes, most definitely. Number two, the law of cause and effect states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And that's a scientific term. You know, if you look at chemistry or physics, that's a a term that that happens. The law of polarity states that everything has an opposite, hot and cold, light and dark good and evil, up and down, good and bad, yes, everything has an opposite. The law of rhythm, yeah, and that, uh, we're not talking about dancing, <laughs> or being able to do smooth moves on the dance floor. <laughs> the law of rhythm states that everything has a natural cycle, and I think about the with the moon does the tide goes in it and it comes it goes out night follows day right life regenerates itself so the law of rhythm the yang and the yang the law of gestation states that everything takes time to manifest i, I like the term gestation cuz you know, that's thinking about having a baby, right? The gestation period. Everything, everything has a beginning and it needs to grow. The law of transmutation states that energy moves in and out of physical form. I talk about ice, water, and steam, right? Steam cools off, 
It becomes water, it gets a little colder, it becomes ice, it gets warmer, it becomes water, it gets too hot, it becomes steam. It changes form. And the, and the idea that no energy is lost, nothing is created or destroyed, it's just changing its physical appearance. And then lastly, it's the law of attraction, which I want to talk about. And really, when we talk about the law of attraction, we're talking about it's getting everything you want out of life through the power of your own minds or mind. In other words, your thoughts are what determine what you are destined to do or become. What goes around comes around. What you give out is what you give back. So I go on to say here in chapter one, imagine for a moment that you have in your possession a force that gives you complete and total power over everything. What if you had that? You're able to command the sun to rise and then to set. The force you possess allows you to control the ebb and flow of ocean tides and what direction the wind blows. You can even command where rain falls or where there would be a drought. That would be a very powerful capability. And you could either take that power and use it for good, or you could use it for not so good. Now, this is only in your imagination that you have this power, because you don't have that kind of control. However, what if you had the power to determine the course of your own life? Now, I think you know, as well as I do, you do have the power to control your own life. Only way you don't is if you're incarcerated or being held captive. Just think about the fact that what would happen if you could accomplish great things and gain great riches by using the power of your own mind. What if you could harness that power? Do you think it would change the course of your life to put you on the path that you choose? You have the power to shape the events of your life and achieve whatever you desire. Now, many times I say that. Many times I talk about it. Many times I say, you can be what you want to be. And then somewhere in the back of my mind, I go, is that true? I mean, really, can you be what you want to be? Uh, You've got to really want it. You know, it's like me recording this podcast. Did I really want to get up and and sit at my computer and don the headset and talk into a microphone? Did I really want to do that? Well, obviously I did (laughs) because I'm doing it. But the other reason is is I said I was going to do it. And then I I didn't think that I couldn't do it, but I had to think that I wanted to do it. And then when I thought about wanting to do it, I had to say, what do you want to talk about tonight? And for those of you who have listened to me before, you know that a lot of times, most of the time, I am asking my subconscious and my higher self, so what am I supposed to talk about now? What do they want to hear? What am I supposed to share? And... Even this evening, I sat down. I was going to do some Ralph Waldo Trine. Looked at a couple of the chapters in the book that I'm sharing with you. And none of them really felt right. And then I heard, you know, 
Again, those of you who know, I, I, I get these thoughts, right? And it said, why don't you start talking about what's in your book? Because so many people have contacted me and emailed me or I've got people who I talk to and they call me and we have lunch or we talk and they talk about what this book has done for them. And one young lady showed me that she had highlighted. <laughs> she said, I got more highlighting than I have pages. And I, I just said, did I write that? Is it that profound? Yes. You know, that ego piece of you that goes, did I? But I know that I was driven to write the book. And I know that I was giving information to share. So when my subconscious talks to me and I hear it, and it says, start talking from your book, I'm following the rules. So those of you who don't remember the book, it's called Christianity, The Law of Attraction, and The One Command. And we're talking about what the law of attraction is. So every person, just like me, hold in your mind the power to shape the events of their life to achieve whatever end they see fit. Joseph Murphy says the law of attraction attracts to you everything you need according to the nature of your thoughts. Your environment and financial condition are the perfect reflection of your habitual thinking. So I've, you know, I, I, sometimes I feel like I keep saying the same things over and over again, but I want to emphasize, look around you. Look around you. Look at your situation. Look at the way things are. Listen to the way you talk. Listen to what your subconscious is telling you. I've met so many people saying, I'm... I'm thinking positive. I'm doing these things. I'm, you know, but I just can't seem to make any money. And I'm going to cancel that because I make money as I need it. I can't seem to do this. I can't, you know, I do this thing called slam your exam because people think they can't pass their exams. And I teach them the ways that they can change that mindset, prepare themselves to be ready to take those tests and pass them as as they begin to believe that they can. You know, I already mentioned what goes around comes around. And that's based on the concept of karma. And basically, if you have practiced kindness and compassion, you will receive it in turn. If you have been deliberately cruel to another, you will receive back into your life that cruelty which you have sent out. Your actions and thoughts morph into physical responses causing the universe to react in kind. Job 4.8 says, As I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. So, well, how did this thing, this law of attraction, really take hold? Well, early in the 20th century, the law of attraction became popular because people started to appreciate the power of positive thinking. They began to learn and more and apply it to their lives. But how did this concept make a resurgence during this time? Well... There's always somebody who's going to write a book. <laughs> and this gentleman by the name of William Walker Arkinson, that's A-R-K-I-N-S-O-N, he was the editor of a new magazine called New Thought. And he published a book called Thought Bri Vibration or the Law of Attraction in the Thought World. He wrote this in 1906. And many people read it and they applied it to their lives and their lives changed. Book that affected me in this journey 
was called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. And he wrote this one in 1910, over a hundred years ago. And he tells you that thoughts are things. And I pulled a passage out of his book. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the inner spaces of the universe. So he's telling us there's a thinking stuff, right, from which all things are made. And he says, a thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. And I bet you if you went back in your life and looked at some of the things that happened, you can pinpoint the time that you started thinking about it. He says, man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. Now, there's other things that man may do. A man may mentally create a chair. He's got a design for a chair, the shape, where the leg is going to be, the back, the seat. Well, it can't come into being unless he makes the chair or he commissions somebody to make the chair. So he and you can impress upon this formless substance and act in inspired ways to make that thing happen. But there are times, and I have seen it and felt it and experienced it, that I didn't have to do anything. And what I thought about and what I wanted showed up in my life. Just like God used the thinking stuff when he said, let there be light. Right? And he created the earth and man and animals and all that kind of stuff. So... If speaking the word or speaking the thought is so, and God created us in his image, could he not have given us the ability to create by speaking and thinking what we wanted and believing that it had been done? So the theory behind the wall of the wall, the law of attraction, is the belief that energy attracts similar energy in the space and time that makes up our universe. Each and every one of us is sending out energy, and that type of energy is determined by the emotional state that we are in, and it may differ from day to day. And sometimes hour to hour or minute to minute. And that energy, many of you have heard, is referred to as vibration. Your vibration is usually in response to some form of stimulus. Something has happened that has caused us to feel happy or sad or scared or confused So one of the things that I want you to do, if you don't get anything else from my conversation today, one of the things I want you to do is start paying attention to your responses. When somebody says something to you, how do you respond? Do you backlash? Do you get upset? Do you get angry? Do you lash out without thinking? Or do you respond in a loving manner? Um, And this just came to mind that I had a comment on one of my videos on YouTube. And the comment was not pleasant. But as I read it, I was so tempted to just remove the comment or block the person. And then I got this thought. I got downloaded and it said, answer with love. Answer with love and sympathy, empathy. Because they were talking about the fact that they, they were in the sandwich generation. They were, 
They had parents and they had kids and they had to deal with both of them. And I just sent them a blessing. And what happened? Because I didn't react negatively, even though it felt negative, but there was something else that that spirit told me there was something else going on here. And as I answered in love, 45 minutes after I answered, I get a notification that there was a response. And the response was, I'm sorry. No, I apologize. And they took down their comment, took it down. So they were going through something at that time. So you never know what somebody is going through. You may not know what they're thinking. And I had to learn to ask. So what's going on with you today? Why are you acting this way? In my universe, I am feeling that you are not happy or you're being hostile or you're happy and and what's going on you know what what happened you're looking really you're smiling and everything so what's going on so be sure and when you answer and you take into consideration what's going on your vibration is different but if you go back into the deg- negative your vibration lowers and you lower so you don't want to do that So positive vibrations generate really good feelings like joy, love, excitement, goodness, affection, peace, abundance, all kinds of stuff. So, generate positive feelings and a high vibration. And don't react, respond when something happens in your life. Ephesians 6, 8 says, Knowing whatsoever good thing each one doeth, the same shall he receive again from the Lord. What goes around comes around. So it doesn't do you any good to know the law of attraction if you do not know how to use the concept to achieve success in your own life. So you need to ask for what you want and you need to know exactly what it is you have to have a burning desire for it and most assuredly if you follow the inspired actions given to you you pursue it what you desire with all your strength it shall come to you Be emotional. How do you feel about this? How does it feel inside when you have what you want? What does it look like, feel like, taste like, smell like? You know, does it bring you and those around you joy and happiness, comfort, peace, security? You gotta be, you you gotta feel what you're asking for and feel as though you already have it and believe that what you ask for is already yours and what you want or desire you will achieve do the inspired actions because you must take action when an idea or something comes to you because that is leading you to what you desire and then Receive with gratitude. Receive it. You have been blessed and you are worthy. And when you get what you ask for, be prepared for it. And just know without a doubt that you will receive what you ask for. And you receive it with thanksgiving and gratitude. The law of attraction is definitely active in your life, regardless of whether you believe it or not. 
contemplate how it works and follow the rules. Andy Andrews said, Remember, whatever you focus upon increases. When you focus on the things you need, you'll find those needs increasing. If you concentrate your thought on what you don't have, you will soon be concentrating on other things that you had forgotten you don't have. And you'll feel worse. If you set your mind on loss, you are more likely to lose. But a grateful perspective brings happiness and abundance into a person's life. The law of attraction is alive and well in your life. Whether you believe or don't believe, act as though you believe. And be positive and respond and do not react. Give your t- desire time to cr- be created, right? Guest station time. And you will change your life by changing your mind and changing your actions. Because if you act as though you're defeated, you are. If you act as though you're a winner and you do the things necessary to be a winner, those honest things necessary to be a winner, then you will win the race that you have begun. Thank you for listening today. Please share the link to this show with your friends and family so that they can learn how to be the best that they can be. Visit my website at commandingyourlife.com and follow me on Facebook. Have any suggestions for the show? Just contact me by emailing Beverly at commandingyourlife.com. Be sure to join me on the next episode. As you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so.